Today I'm joined with Taiwan Hubbard, who is the founder of H2 Hub, where he actually analyzes different technologies out in the marketplace for making hydrogen water. And he's also researched quite a lot about alkaline ionized water and the technology there. Now the question I have to ask today for you is now that we know the only reason to drink alkaline ionized water is the hydrogen present in that water. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the alkaline water technology versus the hydrogen water technology and some of the drawbacks with the alkaline water technology? Sure, yeah, we can walk through some of that. So uh, first of all, uh, we'll kind of go ahead and identify which ones are alkaline water technologies or alkaline ionized water technologies and the hydrogen one. So I think this one is your system, right? Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. So this would be what's classified as an HIM or hydrogen infusion machine. So um, so let's go ahead and discuss uh, this these first. So this would be a alkaline water ionizers. Uh, these typically are going to have some type of uh, water cell within them and they're going to perform the water electrolysis. Uh, but unfortunately with these uh, this technology, um, it's actually going to have certain characteristics that are not going to be great for producing hydrogen rich water. Uh, one being they're going to be highly uh, dependent on source water conductivity or the minerals present within the source water uh, to perform water electrolysis. Uh, and that's an issue um, because everyone source water is different mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that means their hydrogen production could be different and dissolving hydrogen gas might not be very great so already off the bat that's going to be a problem because it can't be universal for mm -hmm. everyone uh, number two is because it's going to generate um, a high pH it's actually going to cause what's called calcium precipitation basically calcium carbonate coming out of the water and that can coat the plates yeah. uh, so in these water cells yeah so yeah so this would be like a typical water cell that's going to have um, you know metal electrodes typically titanium covered in platinum or something like that and then uh, a big issue with it is is that it's going to have what's called a Teflon or basically a semi-permeable membrane. So it's going to split, it's going to cause two different water sources. So one's going to be hydrogen rich water, uh, hydrogen water, or alkaline water that has hydrogen gas dissolved into it, and then acidic water has oxygen dissolved into it. And uh, But the plates can get scaled up, mm -hmm. and that's a problem um, because, you, because you need the minerals uh, to produce the hydrogen rich water. And so, the cleaning and maintenance with this too because it does build up. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. So um, those are going to be some limitations. Also, typically these systems are what's called open to air or open to the atmosphere systems. Um, and so there's going to be a maximum type of level of hydrogen gas that they actually can dissolve into the water, uh, which is basically going to be 1.6 ppm. But they'll never get there without having the pH be through the roof. Mm. So uh, that's also an issue. Um, and they don't typically feature any kind of dissolver technology, which hydrogen is not very water soluble. So typically dissolver technologies were um, using pressure or vortexes or things like that to help the gas dissolve into the water. Uh, these systems don't do that. They typically just have water turbulence or water flowing over the plates uh, to have hydrogen dissolve into the water and doesn't do a great job of it. Uh, they can range anywhere between, you know, undetectable levels of hydrogen gas uh, dissolved into the water or upwards of, you know, one ppm or, mm -hmm. or so, one milligram per liter. So that's alkaline ionized water technology. Um, they're going to have a host of different limitations and is going to be highly dependent upon a person and source water for even producing uh, the hydrogen gas that's going to be dissolved into the water from these systems. Also, like I said, they can actually generate a pH of water that's pretty unsafe to drink. So do you want to just break this down and how it's different from the alkaline? Yes, yeah, so the primary thing, first and foremost, would be the cell and the, and, and the actual membranes that they're using within this cell. Like I said, this is going to be a semi-permeable Teflon uh, membrane, uh, and it's going to separate the cathode and the anode. The cathode is going to be the negative electrode, um, and the anode is going to be the positive electrode. Uh, and they're going to have this membrane in between them to separate the waters. And so because of that membrane, one, one the cathode is going to end up becoming alkaline. And then this one, uh, the anode is going to become acidic, right? So like I said, that's going to have some certain issues that present itself with these minerals, right? So getting clogging up the plates. So this has a particular membrane um, that makes the water's pH different. Mm -hmm. Um, 
hydrogen infusion machines, they use what's called a proton exchange membrane. And so this membrane is a specialized membrane that uh, basically has electrolytes embedded into it. So the membrane itself is conductive. So basically it does not change or alter the pH of the drinking water, which is huge um, because you don't have to run into calcium or all this stuff coming out, minerals coming out into the water, mm -hmm. uh, scaling up mm -hmm. the plates. Um, and then a number, and then number two would be, they have, uh, they produce hydrogen gas typically better and these technologies typically have some kind of dissolver to help the gas dissolve into the water. So you typically see with these units a higher dissolved hydrogen concentration with these systems. Awesome. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. And uh, the pump there is just to... Yeah, yeah. So this would be, um, if you're, if I believe this is correct, this is an under-counter system. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they're going to have a pump that maybe the pump through the water cell, um, you know, get a, you know, so it can end up being 1.2 liters per minute or something like that, right? And um, I don't know, this could be a dissolver. I'm not 100% sure about this system. I haven't actually reviewed this device uh, in particular, but it definitely features a PEM cell. Awesome. So in your opinion, alkaline ionized or hydrogen, obviously, you would say? Mm -hmm. Yes. So in my opinion, I would definitely uh, go with a hydrogen infusion machine um, or hydrogen infu um, like a hydrogen water system technology is specialized for producing hydrogen water. These technologies were designed for producing alkaline water. Uh, not really having hydrogen in mind. And so now repurposing this system that wasn't designed for producing hydrogen with water doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. When you have a device now that's actually you know, specialized for producing hydrogen rich water, that's the type of technology you wanna go for. Um, now, with that being in mind, that doesn't mean that every system is gonna produce a therapeutic level of hydrogen dissolved into the water. That's where my company, HU Hope, comes in to kind of help people navigate to which systems are gonna actually produce therapeutic levels of hydrogen dissolved into the water. Wonderful, and where can people find more information or the products that we've even had certified through your company? Yeah, no, at HU Hub. HU Hub is where you can find that. Um, we actually have what's called a recommendation page, and on that page it has all of our approved products that have gone through our evaluation um, and our basic testing, and uh, you can even find some of her products there that have gone through yes. our evaluation, so. Thank you so much for your time and explaining the differences to us. Yeah, you're welcome.